Hello and welcome to to the final bell brought to you by Panther Tyres. As we are every single week, we really appreciate the support of Panther Tyres. If you need anything for your car, go and check out the guys at Panther Tyres. They will take care of you. They take care of us here on the podcast. We do appreciate their support. We've got lots to talk about today. We're going to be joined by, well, a different guest, uh, Nathan Templeton. Those who go to games at GMHBA Stadium would probably know Nathan as the voice of GMHBA Stadium, also on Sunrise on Channel 7. But little do they know, he's a local Geelong lad, mad Geelong fan growing up, and was not a bad footballer back in his day. Mind you, I'll try and pump that up to him and watch how much he adds a little bit of mayo to it. Uh, Terrific bloke, a fantastic supporter of the club and does a great job here at the ground. So we're going to have some fun with... Nathan Templeton a little bit later on. We'll get to your questions as well. We appreciate you sending all of those in. But mainly we're going to talk some footy and the guys I'm going to talk with are with me every single week. We like to be positive. We like to have some fun and all that sort of stuff on this podcast. I'm worried that might not be possible this week after the display the Cats put in against the, uh, against the Blues on Saturday night down here at GMHBA Stadium. Scotty Gullen and Matthew Stokes... Welcome to both of you. Karen, you've done well. You're sort of a bit up. I'm, oh, I'm up for now. It's about to come <laughs> crashing down. Stokesy, you reckon I'm turning a little bit red and I'm getting a little bit grumpy? Cameron, I wouldn't in, at all introduce you as in, involving redness in, in with what Cameron's about. <laughs> the Cats went down by two points in the end. Oh. 12-7-79 the Blues to 11-11-77, a two-point victory that could have... Oh, if not for maybe a missed shot at goal, maybe a non-advantage, maybe this, maybe that. The Cats could have pinched a win. But I tell you what, if they had have pinched a win, they would not have deserved it. That was oh, a was, disgraceful three quarters. It was one of the worst performances I've seen for a while, actually, to be honest. I mean, this trend of slow starts has crept in and Chris Scott, to his credit, and the players, they had an old-fashioned crisis meeting afterwards. 50 minutes I went for. You've been in those Good. sort of meetings, boys. One in particular in 07 did go the right way and things evolved, but the slow starts, just the lack of, I don't know. I mean, you can't blame coronavirus. I mean, we blame coronavirus for no. everything. No, you can't blame coronavirus. So that we, we Eight days game. earlier, they were played on the same ground and played like the best team I've ever seen. Watching that... Second, you know, second best team you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Watching that, though, Stokesy, those first three quarters, and normally you don't go straight to this place, but it just stunk of attitude. Yep. The Blues' attitude, first rate. They were up for the fight. They were scrapping away. Their pressure was terrific. They were trying to take the game on. They were doing everything they can to put themselves in the game. The feeling was that those Geelong players – just thought it was kind of going to happen and we'll roll through on our talent. Because there's no argument. Geelong, on talent, better team than Carlton with where they're at in their development. But the attitude was poles apart on Saturday night. Yeah, Lingy, I think it's the first time I'm actually glad we didn't get the win. Because I think when you do mm. win, a lot of it gets pushed under the rug. It wasn't, like you said, it wasn't a result. It wasn't uh, the fact that we went missing for three quarters. It was the, the team care in that first three quarters. And one thing that noticed, or stuck out to me a lot in the first three quarters was the, the team care for the Carlton players. They were picking each other off the ground, you know, giving each other high fives. And, and, that's, and that's an attitude part. And that's not how you win games of football. But it's the start of it. And when you see the difference between the care and the love that the Carlton players had in that first three quarters to Geelong, there's a big difference. And I don't know what that is, but uh, it's, it, it stood out to me. And when you're a young team and unsure like Carlton are about how good they are or how good they can be, that's one of the first elements you can put in place, that care and, and unity as a group. And as you said, picking each other up, trying to encourage. But they can quickly, very quickly fall away and fall flat when the other team comes out who's more experienced and, and a better team at that moment and go whack. Yep. It, it's all a bit false. But when that other team, and Geelong in this case, gives them confidence to go with that feeling of care and unity by, here you go, have another mark, have another mark, move the ball down the ground, have a shot at goal. Oh, isn't this nice? The, you could see the Blues younger players just starting to look around and go, yeah, this is working. I, I can play footy here. And Geelong just fed the confidence of Carlton by the way they allowed them to play. I think uh, the, the one saving grace that we've always had is being able to come back here after playing a, 
a disappointing game somewhere else, you know, whether it's Sydney, whether it's, you know, the MCG, and we've always been able to come back here and sort of put it back into this place, you know, get away with a nice win down here, and all of a sudden it's rosy again. To happen down here in our own ground, that's, that speaks volumes. I think there's, a, there's something that's, that needs to be, you know, addressed. Well, you two have played in games where you've known, oh, hang on, we're not on. Like, you've, you've all played in that. But for it to get past even half time, pass into the... Even the third quarter, there wasn't much going on. We talk attitude, but how, how does it not click in for players? Do they just can, Are they not mentally strong enough to go, I can resurrect my poor night and play a good half an hour? Well, I'm, I'm gonna I can get this tackle. I can make, you know what I mean? I yeah. can find little ways to... Yes, little ways to do it, but I'm going to go back to Stokes' word that he used before, care. You, you've got to care so about your own performance, but you've also got to care about your teammates. You can look across, even so. When, when, even when we played the greatest game at the height of our best teams, one player still might have been having a dirty day, a dirty night. Yep. But the difference was you look across and you, and you think, actually, Stokes is down at the moment, struggling a little bit. As well as we're going, you can Why see... Why you pick on you there? <laughs> just because no, he's just in front of us. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right, exactly. But you, you look and you go, okay, he, he's starting to worry about his game. He's starting to do his own head in a little bit. How can I help him? Yeah. You know, Stokes, can I, can I lay a block for you, get you a position? Um, how can you help me? How can we help each other? That sort of thing. And you look to make your teammate be better. So when you say when things are flat and down and struggling, mm. yes, you need to take responsibility for your own acts and the way you play. But also you need to look outside yourself and say, it's not just about me going to get a kick right now and me be, being the superstar here. It's how can I make those three other or four other of my teammates be better in this moment? How do I lift them up and bring us all up to standard? Because one player doesn't get you back into a game when nothing's mm. going to plan. And I think uh, it's not the attitude of you, you're letting yourself down. It's the fact that you're letting your teammate down. I think that hurts me more than anything when I was playing footy. Um, and out there, it just didn't seem... And, and for so long, we've had Joel Selwood, who's, you know, all-time great. Great guy, great player. But there's only so much you can rely on him going back to the well. It, eventually, our next generation of leaders need to stand up. And that was a time when we needed other people to be able to, you know, bow up and say, I'm here. I'll, I'll get this team and, I'll, and get on my back and I'll carry it. Because Joel's back's bloody oh. sore. And, and, <laughs> and was getting tagged. And getting tagged. Yeah, and so he's trying to player. fight through against a really good senior fit mm. player in Ed Kerner. He's fighting through that while trying to lift the team. You mentioned senior players, and, and we're not going to just individualise and pot blokes here, but... In those first three quarters, and this is a little shot at you too, Scott. Oh, Lane. okay, okay. You you were there for the game on Saturday this night. I noted. I read the Herald Sun the next morning. You do. I always I, I love religiously what you write because it's you've always got a terrific balance between some real positives and some things that haven't gone to plan. You don't just sugarcoat it. Correct. Your best players though for the Cats, I I got to disagree with. No, that's okay, you, Cameron. You listed Mitch Duncan as the best player for the Cats. And Gary Rowan, yes. Now, uh, Gary Rowan should have been first. I had him second. That was a minor error. But the reason why I've picked out yeah, I'll, Mitch I'll win this argument. Is Keep because going. in the last quarter, Mitch Duncan was don't, terrific. Don't, don't start at that. Go no, with he, your, he was your main argument. But the first three quarters was why Geelong lost the game, not because Brian Myers in his 25th game happened to take an advantage well, when he shouldn't have. <laughs> Gaz, okay, Gaz missed a goal that in all his of us... 500th would have, game. Yeah, would, all of us would have put our houses on for Gaz. Okay, he missed that. Asava, okay, he had that little moment. That's not why Geelong lost I the game. I agree. They that. lost the game because of their first three quarters. And no they doubt. lost the game because of their senior leaders, leadership players not having the right attitude and playing the game the right way. And Mitch was one of those. So regardless of his last quarter, okay. there is no way Mitch Duncan can be can the best player down? for the Cats. Can I get a right of reply? Uh, yes, Do I get you, a right can, of reply? you can go now, Scotty. So Geelong, for the first three quarters, had no players worthy of being in the top 15 on the ground, other than Gary Rowan. I'll give Gary oh, Rowan. Yeah. And he was... Who? Just inside the top Just 15. Just inside. Yeah. So when the game... When Geelong made this... I know we get annoyed, but... For 30 minutes, they were pretty impressive, started to get a run on, played very well. Who engineered it? There was a couple of players. Mitch Duncan had 12 touches. He needs to get acknowledgement for turning his game around and helping to generate. While it wasn't a comeback that got the victory, he at least generated something. But Whereas you can go second. through the list, hang there's others who didn't. If, if you've got a guy in his 40th game 
who can turn a, his own individual at least performance out of the around batch of like senior that. players, Cameron. He did find something. Yeah, but a lot the, of them the didn't. Fact, the fact that he could find something and so didn't do it in the first three him. quarters makes it worse. No. If it was a forty-game player who turned it around, you go, okay, I can forgive I the fact you've been inconsistent throughout the game. This, so, so would you rather? I'm not. Uh, I'm not agreeing with either of you. But would you Thank rather? You would you, no, I'm not agreeing. No, with that's you. good though. But oh. you're not agreeing with him. Would you? Would you rather him get um, twenty-five touches in the first three quarters? And then go missing in the last quarter when the team went well, or would you well, rather that's him? Cam- that's what Cameron wants. I, I want to see someone stand up when we're when our backs against the wall. I agree. I totally. I, I'm not. Uh, so I'm not agreeing. I'm building just an argument to say he wasn't poor and he didn't fulfil his role. I'm just saying when things changed and the game became a winning chance, he was at the forefront of engineering. Yeah, he got on the end of a couple. Oh, oh you're very harsh. I. You're very hard. I, I want at least he got in a position to get on the end, unlike others. I want someone at the start of the game. Oh, there to was go, no one at the to, start of the to game, say, Cameron. My inspiration for the last none of them. How many though. years? Uh, tw- Thirteen years. Joel Selwood, my captain, the bloke who's ripped us out of horrible positions time and time again. He's getting tagged. We are getting smacked in the mid midfield. It is time for me to stand up and take control of this team. I wanted someone, anyone to do well, that. He and did I wanted that after three quarter time. I wanted someone who's played nearly 200 games or more than 200 games to do that. I think you potting him is harsh. I'm not potting him. And I'm I just think saying he I don't was believe. instrumental in a exciting comeback oh. that nearly no, don't, reaped don't an bring unlikely it, don't, don't, No exciting comebacks here, mate. Um, <laughs> what, what I wanted to see, no joke, uh, in a serious conversation here, apart from used to having to go at each other, is someone actually helped Joel. I mean, there was yes, not one of our you. players yeah, who went block, over yeah, to absolutely. block Ed Kerno. Like, everyone knows Ed Kerno, what he does. Yeah. Right? He's one of those blokes that you'd love to play with. He's Cameron Ling, uh, yeah. probably not as good, but um, oh. he's Cameron Ling. He'll do That's everything nice he can. He can do everything. He'll do everything he can for the team. So he's going to scrap, he's going to push, he's, he's just going to be a pain in the he's rear end. He's fit as a fiddle. Fit as a fiddle. Um, why, why didn't one of our players go and, I, and do this? How many times does a conversation have to come about team care? And that's where I sort of brought up the, the team love and the chemistry between our players is that when you looked at Carlton, they were up and about. Even mm. Paxi Cripps, who's a very quiet um, introvert, even he was out there smiling and, and picking mm. players off the ground. So that's, that's where I come. I, 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 I disagree with you, Scotty, in a sense of you come to fruition once the, the three quarters are done. I, I, I don't, as a player, I don't like the fact that when, mm. when things go right, you end up playing well. Yeah, I, I agree. Think, I think that's something that we, as a club and, and as a team, they probably need to address that because what we do here is it all looks rosy. We leave the game and go, oh, that was the exciting last quarter. I couldn't care oh, less no, about I last agree quarter. The, 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 the I had to put names show. in, though, that's all. I had to find names. <laughs> um, and you mentioned Paddy Cripp's name. What a player. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, he's something special, that bloke. Well, hey, quick bit of selection for our listeners. Well, it uh, sounds like I've Reece got the Stanley. big pen out. Oh, let's let's briefly talk about Reese. I mean, we did pump him up yeah. like Polly Farmer. Actually, um, that's a good point. Unfortunately, this is the problem with his whole career. I mean... Tease is being kind. Yeah. Because yeah. that wasn't Max Gorn or Brody Grundy. He was that was a against. Frenchman playing his second game for that club. And who, who couldn't get a game for Hawthorne. And he, he was outstanding Tally. compared to. So, your Reese's knee, medial ligament, we believe. Now, Darcy Ford, I believe, in the practice match that well, was played was very good. We've got to be careful about our mail on the training. Uh, uh, we did get told <laughs> Jack Stephen was outstanding. Our in match source play. last <laughs> week. What, what do they do with Jack Stephen? <laughs> Go again. Play him again. No, I, I, no, Scotty. Seriously, this. I know, I know what you mean. He, he's been through five months of preseason. Obviously, he's come into a game where the the team was poor. For I agree three with quarters. that. So he was in a lose lose situation. I think you back. He found him. the ball only once in the second half, and he was on the ground a lot because Delhouse was out, Menengola was out. No, I don't, I don't, I don't really care what your opinions <laughs> on this. You, you back him in. You, you got him to the club because he is a four time best and Ferris. Say that St Kilda. Correct. But he is a gun player. He, he is a gun player. We need to give him time to be able to get familiar with how our team plays. Um, and that wasn't the way we play on the weekend. But we do need to back him in. Can I ask though, Stokes? I'm, I, I, I'm with you. I think he should play again. But I'm just going to be the devil's advocate here. Yep. If he has another game like that, is that going to set him back Sends the a wrong lot message. further? Because he'll be worrying and stressing about it. As opposed to maybe... Three weeks of practice matches and um, uh, training 
uh, mind you, you can't do contact training <laughs> now. So maybe, maybe I've probably just answered my own question there. But you, you get what I mean. If he has another bad one, does he just start worrying about it so much that it affects him for a long period of time? I just think that you back in that he's a he, he's a sensational player, and I think he's probably something that we need in our in our team. We need someone who can run and carry, just like Clarky. We need someone that can break the lines oh. and bring excitement because the first three quarters of our game kind of looked a little bit boring. Oh. It was very stagnant. So we need someone like Jack Stevens, who can create a bit of run and carry, get a handball receive, go, and go on a 10-metre spurt and then kick long. Jordan Clark, exactly the same. Does Clark come back in? I hope so. I've done. I've, done, I've got five changes. Okay, you do it. Does Collar come back in? Well, Harry Taylor, you've got to look at Harry. He got exposed. So if Collar Jasney's fit, that works. Reece Stanley out, fought in. Sam Minagola had back spasms, so he can have a rest. So that's Clark, do you think, or is it... Clark, yeah. And then you've got Keep Jack, you've got Luke Dallas concussion. They think he's okay, but Fogarty was very good in that practice match. And the word, one word, Chuka, has been mentioned. I saw his name in an article. He played very well in the practice match again. I, I heard he found the footy, didn't fumble, was really good around the contest. Well, funnily, because around the contest in, against Carlton... Along with very poor and Brandon Parfit comes back. Parfit comes back. No, I mean, what a all. loss! Yes, I mean, one game already oh, was just like so. There's five changes at least. You got to make changes. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. This agile year, you got to you what? haven't really got time to let people. Can I ask you about simmer. can I ask you about Harry Taylor because he's um obviously been a, an amazing club and for no, us, extraordinary. Club. Is it are you saying he's getting dropped or are you saying we're, we're resting him? No, he's getting dropped. I think. I don't know the conversations we had, but Harry was going to retire and so was Gaz at the end of last year. Had great years, both of them. Then they go, oh, no, we can go again. The club backed them. But if Chris Scott hasn't had a conversation with said, Harry, you're not playing every week, depending on matchups, you're going to shuffle in and out. Yeah. And I, I, knowing Harry, I don't know him as well as you guys, but he would understand that. Uh, if there's one person that would be more... Yes. Um, then happy to do whatever the club needs. It would be Harry Taylor. But I think at the same time, I mean, do you back him in a sense of that he's given so much to the club that it was one bad game, that the ball was coming down with no pressure from the midfield. Um, so the, the back line, you, get, you don't get a pass, but you get a... No, I know what you mean. Credits in the bank mean a lot. But I, I would say yes to your answer, but not this week because I don't think the Melbourne forward line is going to suit Harry. They're going to have Agreed. two talls, maybe tops. Yep. Like they play Vandenberg, who's not a tall. Petrarca's... Well, he's middle of the ground, mid, not mid a tall. And, mid and forward. Yep. Wiedemann, they're Tom, not even playing. Tom McDonald. Yeah, you might only have two tall. So that's what I mean. And a match-up scenario, I think, and I hope, Harry mindset is, I get it. That back line won't play that bad again. Blitz had his worst game I've seen him play for a long, long time. Wow. Uh, Tom Stewart, Tom's well below his best. I mean, the... the they had a bad night, the back line, um, and they've got to wear the responsibility of that. Mm. But I would also say, as it did when we played Stokes, and as it's done for eternity, the scene is set in the middle of the ground. Yep. If that ball is coming down with zero pressure on, good luck. You could have Matt Scarlett, Dustin Fletcher... Um, <laughs> Gone blank on <laughs> defenders. <laughs> there, Darren Milburn. <laughs> Darren Milburn. <laughs> Corey Enright. Corey yeah, Enright. thank you, boys. Tom I went, Harley. I went completely Tom blank. Then. You could have them all. <laughs> Tom Lonigan. We need a Tom Lonigan at the moment. Tom, yes, what's, do. what's Dom's doing? Is he, he's, I think he's in stand at the moment. We might need to bring him and back. They wouldn't be able to stop it when the ball's coming no, down. I like agree that. with that. And forwards aren't going to kick goals when we are moving it so ridiculously slow. So, middle of the ground is where it starts. But the back line had a bad night as so well. So what do you think our midfield's missing at the moment? Because if you look at that midfield and what we have, it's a pretty good midfield group. But they're all a very particular type of player. So do you, what do you say? What do you we need some it's sort of... It's speed spread. I mean, it's yeah, historically... But in, uh, not, not, in, not just in one direction, though. No, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, you can go both ways. Two-way running. Yeah. But then if you spread, then we're, we're getting beaten by the co- at the contest at the moment. So but also spreading over to the next little spill of the ball. Exactly. And Joel Corey we need. Yeah. I know we're not getting Joel back, but that player who just gets you to the next number at the contest, wherever it might be, he just gets there. But I didn't like, you know, the back line, they like to play one loose. So Carlton had more at the contest a lot during that night. Yep. Because Geelong, I think, is sort of like, oh, no, Sal or Danger, you know, we'll get it and then we'll be okay. But they were getting beaten because they were one less man. And Needing they, the one back loose, that defence doesn't need extra help, in my opinion. It, back your, back your defence in. They can handle one-on-ones. The whole thing was bad, bad, bad. So, Cameron, <laughs> what, do you, 
what do you want to see the, from the boys? So we're playing we're playing Melbourne, who's off a, a week off, which doesn't mean much. At the running, MCG. At the MCG. With a bigger ground spread, what do you want to see from our midfield group and our leaders at the football club? Well, I go straight to how does Melbourne play? Oliver, Brayshaw, Viney, Harms, they're going to hunt the footy. They're going to hunt mm. the footy and then they spread and quick couple of quick hands, that sort of thing. We've got to match them that in that area. We've got to go after them physically and after the footy physically with numbers around the footy, strong in the contest, but not rolling the do- – not, not – <sighs> It's not full on just on bolting forward. It's, it's like a subtle wave of we're just running sort of forward and getting past. And once we're past and we don't get it in that first moment, we don't have a second, third and fourth out number back at the contest for the little spill 10 metres away. I, I would say what I'm looking for, stripping it down to the pure basics, is a repeat out number around the congested situation, around the, the quick kick forward or back, that then we then swarm to the next one. And win that, fix that up first. And on with Scotty, trust our defenders to be mm. one-on-one and, and to play and beat them in. And to, yeah. not just, I'm not just talking about go man-on-man. I know it's, it's more um, yeah, scientific than as... that. But actually trust them to play as a back six or a back five and, and win contests and halve contests. And then be able to outnumber around the ground and then start a little bit more aggressive transition Sc- when we do Scotty, win the ball. he's wasted in, in the media. Oh, of course he's, 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 he's wasted. That. You're oh. very wasted, Cameron. No, I'm not at all. Uh, one very little passionate. Uh, we're going to take a break because I want to talk with Nathan Templeton soon. He's, uh, his face is silver oh, fox. Is just, that. Uh, is that a rinse? What a cutie. Flashed up on the screen. <laughs> we're going to get to him in just a second. Did get a little, did see a little um, uh, press release. Oh. It's a little bit of breaking oh. news. Uh, Hardy Grant Books um, have released that they are releasing the Gary Ablett book, wow. the official biography, Gary Ablett's book, in November 2020 mm. to coincide with the end of the season and Gary Ablett's retirement. Well, that... that uh so that would say that that on answers... On the back of Saturday night, he's made the call. That answers all of hey, our hey, questions hey, about... Hey, <laughs> hey, don't just try and do a whack there and walk away. I mean... Well, well, so that, but that answers the questions, doesn't it, about whether or not this is his last season? Oh, no, I think he's it's... John Farman. We had, we had to do... He made me and Matt go and talk at some... Um, last year? Last year. Yeah, I mean, so. how many times <laughs> we have to do this? We'll probably have to do it again this year. Jeez, Gaz. Well, pretty sure <laughs> he, did, he did put us in a room with the crowd, so I appreciate it, Gaz. <laughs> uh, before we go to the break, it's important to stay healthy while staying at home. That's why GMHBA have partnered with Keezer. If you're a GMHBA member with extras cover, you can access telehealth or in centre physio from the team at Keezer with no out of pocket expenses up to your annual limits until September 30. Waiting periods and sub limits apply. Search GMHBA Keezer for details and stay healthier at home. Nathan Templeton, the superstar junior footballer, coming up next. Welcome back to to the final bell with Stokesy and Scotty Gullen, and we are brought to you by Panther Tyres. Appreciate their support. Anything you need for your car, go talk to the guys at Panther Tyres. As promised, over the, what now, couple of years we've been doing this, Scotty, we've had wonderful guests on. We get the senior coach. We get the GM of footy. Big names. Big some names. past legends of the club. <laughs> Movie stars. <laughs> rock stars. I got the email this week and it said Nathan Templeton. Uh, like, the budget's clearly been cut uh, because of COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a disappointment. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there he is. That's him in the background. He's Welcome, here. Tempsey. <laughs> the, just for our listeners now, I'm sure most of our listeners would, would know um, – He's the ground announcer here at GMHBA Stadium, so the fans who come here would know his voice very, very well. On Sunrise on Channel 7, he's been a Channel 7 sports reporter. He's covered the Australian Open. He's covered Olympics, Commonwealth Games, formerly with Channel 10, and most importantly, Scotty, formerly with the Colac Herald, yeah, was it? Tim, explain this. I missed this yeah. key moment of your life in my hometown. When did this happen? Well, I, I tried to keep it as brief as possible, but basically I, I, couldn't, get a job at, <laughs> I couldn't get a job at the Geelong Addy and then a job wow. came up at the Colac Herald. So I, I commuted for a while and then the editor said, look, we do prefer our journos to live uh, in the grand city of Thompson Optimal. rule, you've got to spend money in the yeah. tent. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I did live there for, uh, it was about nine months all up in around 
5.06 at the Colac Herald. Very wow. good grounding, good place to learn. Mark Doran, one of your former Channel 7. Yeah. Ben Casanelli. Yeah. There's been a lot Ben of Broad. Ben Broad. <laughs> And a brief stint yep. in Tasmania as well. Now, we're going to have a little bit of fun with you, Tempsey. I hope you don't mind because I'm going to get to your footy career a little bit later on and uh, <laughs> how promising I hope you've got was. plenty of time. Can I ask <laughs> one journalist question, though, before we um, get to the more yes. important stuff? I, I forgot to mention in the first segment that the AFL world got turned on no. its head very briefly with Connor McKenna's positive COVID-19 test. The game got postponed. Was the was Essendon going to be able to field a team this week? Blah, 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 blah. Turns out he's got a negative test. A um, <laughs> couple of days later. <laughs> what's going on with all of this, Temps? Well, it sounds like the most likely thing that happened is he, he was actually at the end of the illness um, and that's why it was positive and now it's negative. But I don't think anyone knows for sure. Um, it does seem like sort of a cock up or a very confusing situation. He's positive, negative, positive, negative. But I think the main thing looking at the big picture is we're going to have hiccups along the way. And uh, Gillian McLaughlin has used this word about 8 million times, but agile, we're going to be agile. And we have to expect uh, road um, speed humps along the way. So I think we've got the capacity to just make up these matches. Um, at the moment, those two clubs are just one, one match behind everyone else find a spot for them, I think we can still make the season happen. The, the worry probably now is with the spike in Victoria, um, the huge, there's going to be a delay in getting crowds into matches. And you would think it's inevitable that some other player somewhere will, will test positive. So I think the AFL knew uh, these things would happen, but it's just a shame that it happened so soon after the resumption because we just want to get a bit of momentum and get things moving and feel like we are going to get a proper season and then if other um, problems happen along the way, we'll be able to deal with it. So there's been a spike in Victoria, but our beautiful town of Geelong and the <laughs> surf coast has uh, had no cases. So should we put a wall up on that highway so no one can come in? Either that or everyone plays their home games at Geelong and we get five, <laughs> five million bucks per match or something like that. Um, get everyone out of debt and everyone can play and maybe we can even have a little crowd down there. Spoken like a true oh, Geelong boy. Fantastic. Tempsey grew up in Geelong, <laughs> played his footy just across here at St Mary's and used to turn it on, Scotty. Oh, I can imagine. Just one last one on that one, Temps. How does one player who he wrestled with be the only one that could potentially have it? I mean, seriously, <laughs> how are we swallowing that? Well, there's a lot of trust being put in the people who are investigating these situations. And, um, you know, we've always heard that doctors are beyond reproach, but the way he was um, blowing that snot out of his nose, I reckon the whole club's in peril because it just went everywhere. I mean, there's photos of him touching other people. So uh, how do we – there's a lot of riding on getting the game going again. So um, well, you're going to look into those uh, parts of training where a player <laughs> blows a bit of nose and all of a sudden he's a German-fested person. Uh, uh, clubs are going to turn around and say, we don't want your cameras at, the, at training because the, the push to him, the, the, the media that I've seen um, going into that vision and drawing every little part of it is, I don't think it's mm. helpful to anyone. Do you, what, what do you think? No, and, well, I mean, I, I totally understand that players and clubs don't always want cameras there. Obviously, I'm on the other side of things and you like to think that the media can work respectfully with the clubs. I don't think anyone went there looking for players blowing their nose, but obviously when the story broke, you go back over that tape and go, oh, hang on a minute. He was um, getting a fair bit of snot out of there. So <laughs> you sort of, uh, that almost becomes like evidence. That vision becomes sort of evidence. So, it- but I agree, I agree. The, the, the clubs will have to tell players to be more careful seems inevitable that folks are going to spit occasionally, you know, wipe their nose and all that stuff. So I just hope we can be sensible about it and not go around looking for players making minor mistakes. Isn't it good to get Tempsey on to talk about snot? Yeah, no, uh, that's the right one. Our (laughs) podcast has gone too too low. (laughs) Now, Temps, uh, you have, growing up in this wonderful town, you and the Premiership yep. skipper seem to, my mail is, spent some time together. What can you elaborate? Because <laughs> he's got a lot to bring to the table about no, you. No, Nathan. Mm. Oh, all right. Okay, Where did your well, relationship I'll, I'll... form and how did it prosper? Well, I mean, I wasn't going to mention my um, 
sparkling junior football career, but since you asked You've me... You've mentioned it three times already. We, we, uh, we met at the Geelong Falcons. Now, I was in the squad, very, very average player, got one game. But Lingy was two years beneath me, so he was already playing when I was under 18. He was at 16. <laughs> uh, Scarlo was my year, but my best mate from school was David Clark. Um, so through Falcons, I met Lingy, and then when Clarky was at... Geelong, uh, spent a lot of time with these boys socially. Um, <laughs> and so by the time the class of 01, the Stevie J, James Kelly, Bartell types were arriving at the club, Lingy was pretty established as a uh, on the nightclub circuit and, and Clarky <laughs> was probably captain of the social club. And so there was a few times when the new players at the club were taken around the town just to show them a few uh, options for nighttime activities and um, the night that Steve Johnson got the nickname Face Johnson, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was there and witnessed him taking a little tumble. Were you there that night, Lingy? He tripped over, you know, the car yards had the, the low slope yeah, chains. It's a trap for all punters. He, he tripped over mm. that, forgot to, forgot to put his hands down <laughs> and um, his face <laughs> paid the price, yes. I was there that yeah, night. I reckon Kingy That's took him shot. off to uh, hospital and the rest of the boys just said, I'll wishing you all the best, Stevie. We'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow. And off, <laughs> off we went in, into the night. But anyway, progressing on from that, uh, yes. <laughs> um, spent a lot of time with Ling originally at the Eureka Back Bar. That was our old haunt. And then um, Lammy's became uh, the venue of choice. And Lingy had this magical white card that just paid for everything. It's, that that was, card was unbelievable. <laughs> oh my god! What, what, what you was that would, card? Up, <laughs> it was yeah. a, it was a, um, a bottomless pit of money. Apparently, I don't know how Lammy stayed in business, but we used to drink. Sometimes the order would be about thirty laxmans, is what we used to say. A, a laxman was a vodka, a double vodka and squash. So VVS vodka, vodka, squash. So they became laxmans. And um, <laughs> that was right about the time we BBS Laxman made yeah, that great yeah. double hundred. <laughs> yeah. So there was up to 20, 30 Laxmans ordered at, uh, at a time. And from what I remember, I never took my wallet out of my pocket. It was a pretty good setup. <laughs> Um, for some reason, everything he's saying is uh, actually bringing back a flood of memories there. And have, you got, have you got notes over here? No, no. I, I, do, I, do just want to, I do just want to pick up one thing um, Nathan's just mentioned there. He glossed over his uh, Geelong Falcons footy career. What type of player? Short of stature, young uh, gentleman. A, a, a ball-winning midfielder. Oh, magnet. So this is just um, – so at the end of last year – uh, my mother was <laughs> dropping off some. Um, <laughs> some uh, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty unlucky with this. My mother was dropping off some used goods at the uh, the Salvation Army, um, the the op shop, and walked in and found a framed Geelong Falcons football jumper. <laughs> And just out of interest, <laughs> Mum thought, "Oh wow, well, I haven't seen one of those since Cameron played." Went and checked it out. Found the um, the little plaque. Nathan Templeton, Geelong Falcons, one match, two kicks, one handball, one mark, two tackles, 1997 season. Who has put this in a glass cabinet? Framed Geelong Falcons jersey, the one that Nathan Templeton wore in his one match, and my mum found it. Mum then bought it and took it to a, um, a friend of ours, um, a, a foundation set up in his honour and took it to the auction. <laughs> And it got auctioned off and got, I think, $220. $3 million. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, that's $220, not very well spent. But the, the back story is, it, just so people are clear, that was uh, people, my friends taking the mickey out of me at my 21st birthday. I didn't go and get my jumper <laughs> frame. It was a running joke that I was in the Falcon squad. Uh, I finally got one match. It was when all the gun players were away at the national championships. They probably felt sorry for me. One game, wasn't up to it, got dropped. But then on my 21st, all my mates went to mum and dad's house, dig, dug out my jumper and got it framed. <laughs> but the reason it ended up at the Salvos is my dad moved out of the family home this year and we said, oh, this frame's in pretty good nick. Let's take it to the Salvos. And uh, not thinking it would be sold with my jumper in it, but you had to damage the frame to get, in, to get the jumper out. So I said, well, leave it as it is. Someone will buy the frame. So I wasn't trying to raise a huge amount of money based on my uh, fame as a Geelong Falcons one-gamer. 
Someone's bought the jumper, Tempsey, and they've got it. They're going to use it at some stage. Now, you're picking on me with our memories of our time together. What about my mate over here, Matthew Stokes? He was... Don't uh, go there, Tempo. Come on. Um, well, look, I'm a, I'm, a fr- I'm a friend of the club, but I, it was my job to, to dig up something on all my guests because I am a journo after all. <laughs> What was – can you help me out, though? Because I'm trying to remember back to Stokes. He's pretty – I mean, I know there was that one indiscretion, but pretty squeaky clean was Matthew Stokes. But the one You're not thing, selling that, The you? one thing I questioned was perhaps Stokes' diet over the years. His job now is to stir up the um, young boys and keep them fit and trim. Yeah. Any stories about uh, Matthew Stokes' diet during his playing career? Oh, very hard for those young players to take him seriously right. after this bombshell. Uh, I've got sources within uh, – the Pizza Hut chain, who informed me that after one of the grand finals, Matthew Stokes ordered a barbecue chicken pizza every night for seven consecutive nights. And <laughs> my, my source delivered some of those. So I, I trust him and I know this is accurate. So I put that to you, Matthew. Did you order Pizza Hut every night for an entire week? Well, <laughs> Tempo, they're saying that I was at home for seven nights in a row. <laughs> and after a flag, I can't remember. I, Did you order was pizza every night for seven food. days straight? Oh, look, I, I do love my pizza at barbecue chicken. That's for damn sure. <laughs> um, so I'm not hiding well, from the fact, but it was, was I living at Otto? Does, does Otto take a bit of blame for this? or Don't blame the big look, fella. I can't, I, I can't say too much, but I have got details on the delivery times here. Now, <laughs> uh, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, then a, a ten in the morning, so that's obviously breakfast. There's a lot of mid, a lot of midnight sort of calls as well. So I don't think you were just having sitting down to dinner uh, with a with one glass of wine at at six thirty at night. Your, your sauce is uh, is wrong. Oh, <laughs> oh, come on! I guarantee you that I wasn't home at midnight <laughs> after we yeah. won a flag. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, I do, I, 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 and if you ask anyone that's uh, lived with me, um, in Otto and uh, Ryan Gamble and James Kelly, I do love my uh, pizza <laughs> deliveries on a hangover. There's lots of specials too. For Hang on. Uh, lots of specials. <laughs> Hang on, Brad Ottens, Ryan Gamble and James Kelly, they, they're your backup. Yeah, they're, yeah, I take, t- I'll take st- Otto out of there, Otto's a good bloke, leave Otto <laughs> The, um, the, the um, biggest, the biggest trap is when you're hung over, and then you start looking into the uh, the sides. You know, you get oh, eight eight chicken wings with red yeah, chicken wings sauce. There are unbelievable. <laughs> deep we fried cheesy garlic quick. bread. Look it up. Chocolate mousse. Uh, you don't need any of that <laughs> stuff. Just get your pizza and move on. So the fact that when I brought up your diet, you looked daggers at me as though your diet was just absolutely squeaky clean. I'm perhaps it's not. Es- excuse me. We bloody earned it. Did you say it was after a flag? <laughs> I should it was after a flag. I don't, I don't know if you played in it, though. I don't, I'll have to check I, that. I, was, I, was, uh, <laughs> I felt sorry for myself. <laughs> <laughs> what girls, do girls eat it when they get breakups. They have ice cream. <laughs> I, I had pizza. But, but I mean, speaking of diet, uh, Lingy, um, oh, no, no, I was nearly going to call you captain. I was nearly going to call you captain then, but did you guys know that Lingy used to demand that we nicknamed him captain way, way before he was captain? Are you aware of that? This, this no, doesn't surprise us. That is not true. <laughs> you you were known as captain from about the year two thousand, uh, and my my memory is that you demanded it because you said, "I'll obviously be captain one day, so you might as well start." <laughs> now, hang on. That was your mate David Clark who started calling me that, and then he spread that story, and there was not a word of truth to that story. I think, I think, it, I think it was more because because you're a squeaky clean Mr. Perfect and always the captain of everything at school. But anyway, that I'm off topic. I was going to come back to your diet, Lingy. I can remember a Saturday afternoon uh, where we met up for a couple of quiet jugs, and was the name, you know the pub that's at Bottles and Barrels on. Um, yeah. Aberdeen Street. I don't know what the pub's called, but bottles and barrels there. And we were we all got a palmy, having a couple more drinks. And about half an hour later, another palmy comes to the table, and Lingy eat Lingy eats another entire pub meal, every chip, every bit of palmy, two two whole pub meals in less than an hour. Just an animal. At least I had one pizza. You've had two palmies. You had one yeah. pizza every day for seven days straight. Probably the same amount of calories as two palmies in one day. It's a good point. How, how, how is Tempsey getting away? I know. He's got a him, long list. Before we do, Temps, what about our other mate here? 
Scotland. Oh, I'm, there's nothing on me. Well, look, I, it's it's not easy to get dirt on Scotty. Thank Scotty, be, because you. because uh, of the column that he does in the Herald Sun, he's basically just a rumor merchant, and he, he knows that if anyone tries to bring him down, he'll just make up something about them and put it in the paper. So well, people were not bad. People were reason. People were reasonably tight-lipped, but the main feedback I got was that um, Scotty kicked three or four goals in a grand final for Uni Blacks, but registered zero tackles for his entire career because oh, he was yeah. so so fat and slow that he couldn't chase. <laughs> I'm not denying um, that. I did win it off my own boot, though. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was in the day, but types. forwards. The glorious days when forward pockets didn't have to do silly things like chase and tackle. But look, the main feedback I got. Uh, from contacts of Scott were that coronavirus hasn't changed his um, work-life balance at all because he hasn't been seen in the office at the Herald Sun for about four years. It's the year so 2020, not- Tempo. It's called online working. and uh- But, Temps, you're right. You, you nailed it before, though. When you hold such power in your hands yeah. mm. as that column, the score, where all sorts of scores are settled... People are ringing here yep. from every walk of life just saying, this, is, this has happened, use it when you need to use it. He has, within his laptop at home, it's, it's one of those, air, it's an air-gapped laptop. It's not connected to the internet because it is so powerful. Like Edward yeah. Snowden, uh, <laughs> he has that much power within that laptop that no one will mess yeah. with Scott Gallen. No. You, you are well, right, Tim. I don't like the office. He's the most dangerous. He's the most dangerous man in Melbourne because he doesn't really have to substantiate any of his stories. He just says, oh, we're hearing that a certain person might have done this. And so he You're can just take it. You're all 100% any- right. I, I, I believe you. How many direct messages do you get every day from people just going, oh, just out of curiosity, who's this? I get a lot of that? messages from someone <laughs> in your network, let's just say that. Oh, okay, okay. And he's an issue of RTB. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and uh, he gets the odd mention in your column as well. Oh, he's prolific. He's one of my favourite yeah. topics. No, <laughs> yeah, get him, get him, Lingy, get him. Come on, go. He's, he's get him. He's just hanging. He's hanging crap on us the yeah. whole time. This is not this is our his podcast. podcast. Oh, I, 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 no, he's, too, he's too nice a bloke. He's the trusted silver no. fox. He's had grey hair since he was about twenty-five. And <laughs> off camera, every, you said everyone, he had serious issues on a number front. Everyone thinks that he's just the most. <laughs> Gentlemanly well, human that's what being I thought. to ever walk the earth. Um, you were <laughs> fairly good entertainment over the years, Nathan. Um, What's his best trick? Yeah. <laughs> what is your best trick? If, if it, a day oh. of just entertainment for the boys sitting around having a little bit of a punt or something like that. To close, come there on. Was is some, this where he's th- going? There, was some, there were some Sundays at the St Mary's Club Rooms where I'm just glad there was no CCTV. I used to overheat when I drank alcohol. <laughs> And um, the sweat would make my clothes fall off uh, sometimes. Um, but I always kept it in the confines of the club rooms and I don't believe there was any complaints or police reports from what I can remember. I don't think I've ever seen a man nude more than Nathan Templeton. Oh, really? <laughs> you didn't live at Otto. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't, uh, I can't speak ill of Nathan because he's such an upstanding, fine young man. Um, father of two now. Congratulations too, Tempsey. Thank T- you. A ten Thank week you very old, much. As well as a three-year-old, yeah. two boys. Yeah, Jack's almost three and James was born uh, early April. So uh, my wife and I are actually very fortunate. We're probably, uh, apart from Scotty, the least affected by coronavirus in, in Australia because we weren't going out socialising anyway uh, with, with a new baby. And thankfully, both of us, uh, our work seems to be, uh, jobs seem to be secure. So we're very, very lucky. So we had a lot of time at home, um, which has been good. Uh, it was a bit hard keeping the grandparents away initially, but now that sort of opened up a bit. So... Busy at home with two little ones, but uh, yeah, we're very, very lucky. They're both healthy. So, what's your day? What time? Are you, what's the alarm? What time does it go off, Timo? How's your day uh, transpire? It, yeah, so, so I, as Lingy mentioned, I used to be a sport reporter on the like the evening news, six o'clock news at seven. About four years ago, I switched to Sunrise. So now I do news and sport and other bits and pieces. But so three forty-five, the alarm goes off. So bad. then I wake up wake up and check my emails and ring around and work out what's happening and then drive myself out to 
the scene of whatever's happened in Melbourne overnight. So some I don't know if you know Tempo, of... but Pete's heart is open at 3.45 <laughs> yeah. when that alarm goes off, just in case you're wondering if you need some breakfast. There's a fair few uh, hot cakes and sausage and egg McMuffins, I have to say, in my diet. I try not to, but my, I just live out of my car. I'm an absolute pig um, because I'm just, I, I just sit in my car all day eating bacon and egg rolls, basically. It's, a, it's pretty messy, but it's a bit of a weird lifestyle. Um, yeah, but often I finish work reasonably early, so it's good for family. But, uh, yes, you get a bit tired. I, I look forward to a Friday Arvo nap. Tempsey, uh, we're going to have to let you go. We could keep talking to Nath for a long time. And I, I did go easy on him, didn't you I? You have. You've, you've gone soft. <laughs> no, I Stokes, know. He, he's been disappointing, <laughs> hasn't he? He's, he's, just potted, he's just both potted us for being Completely. pretty much messes. Yeah. And you've just let him get off. Let he's, him go. he's the voice of GMHBA Stadium. Yeah, the that, fans here love him. They don't want to hear anything bad about Nathan Templeton. He's wow. the That's very well handled. Anyway, I'm, say, I'm sending out some messages as we speak to get dirt on you. <laughs> You're gone. You have to have me back when you get some dirt on. But look, my brief from the producer was, come on, uh, hang, the, hang a bit of you-know-what on all three of them and then get out of there. So hopefully I've done that <laughs> successfully. You've done your job perfectly, Tempsey. Great to chat. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing you back as the voice of GMHBA when crowds are allowed back in here and the... The cats get firing up and play a bit better than they did on Saturday night. But really appreciate your time and enjoy those two beautiful boys and uh, and staying at home and uh, fatherhood, mate. Thanks for you. Thanks for joining thank, us. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, listeners, and go cat. Absolutely great to chat with Nathan Templeton. There, we're going to take a break. We'll get your questions up next. All right. After all of that, we are back. Nathan Templeton has just destroyed each and every one of us. Stokesy, we heard a good story in the break. Then, well, well, why no. wasn't that on our? Uh... I had to look after Nathan. <laughs> hey, 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 maybe, maybe you can put it in your article. Yeah, <laughs> I will. Actually, it's a good whisper. Oh, didn't he? Whack Which you a TV of reporter oh, stop likes it. drinking? Stop okay, it. sorry. Yep, okay, uh, we are brought to you by Panther <laughs> Tires. We're also supported by Deakin University. Digital is in Deakin University's DNA with. 40 years of experience in distance and online learning. Discover why they're the number one Australian public university for overall educational experience. Premium, proven, loved. Study online at Deakin. All right, we've taken a breath. Yes, we've, we've, all, come, we've yeah. all copped our wax. We've we settled did. down from Saturday nights. Um, if anyone, anyone out there has any uh, stories on Nathan Templeton out there, <laughs> uh, please send us through to the Flick Club because payback is a... Mm. Yes, and yes. it will happen next and, week, and we might get Tempsey back on at, no, uh, at some stage. Uh, are we trying to get so Pat McAfee, for yeah, those who don't American know, man, the American man who's fell in love with AFL football, former punter, Colts punter, um, pro bowler, um, has gone nuts. His producer is it Tony Diggs? Uh, uh, co- Diggsy, like, Diggsy, co- get with it, mate. Diggsy, Diggsy. Okay, uh, co-host and producer Diggsy has taken the cats on board and is pumping up. You're my the boy, cats Diggsy. Left. You're my boy. He was even trying to defend the performance on Saturday uh-huh. night. Mm. Defending Gaz. Yeah, defending Gaz. We chance of having a chance. I think we've got to get Diggsy on. Okay. We'll, we need Diggsy. We'll work on that. Get and and McAfee, he goes for Collingwood, so we don't we don't want anything to do with him. Yeah. We'll go to his main man. He went because Mason Cox. Oh. American. <laughs> he obviously barracks for the Collingwood. VFL player. Yep. It is an amazing podcast. I've actually started listening ever since I've started. And the way they talk about football and NRL <laughs> is hilarious. <laughs> Uh, right, let's get to your questions and then we'll wrap things up and um, we're going to uh, hope, hopefully talking next week about a much better Cats performance. But some of these questions, uh, well, Dragon, Drag, Dragon, uh, D-R-A-G-A-N, I hope I pronounced that right, Dragon. Uh, what do you think Geelong's problem is after the Carlton performance, complacency, or is there more to it? Dragon, I think it, it was an attitude, number one. Yeah, but th- it's, there's a history to it. And even the coach admitted that afterwards. This isn't a one-off issue with well, this group. Well, then it's a it's still an attitude thing. Yeah, but the last four final series, you go through them, first quarters, cost so, them. So how do you approach training exactly. during the week? How do you approach exactly. meetings? This how is you why you are a coach in waiting, as exactly. we found out today. <laughs> I think uh, also too, Cameron, I think this, this team is looking for their identity, what they stand for. And I think they haven't found that, to be honest, the way they play. Um, you know, we always went back to our spirit award and you know, yep. playing for each other. So I think they probably... They're probably looking for that that edge and sense of what they actually, as a group, what they want to be remembered for, what they want to stand for as a as a, as a playing unit. Nice. Um, Mitchell asks, and we, we touched on it a little bit before, um, but maybe didn't discuss another name. I don't know where he's at 
with his injury, with Stanley's injury, how do we go with Fort or Sav in the ruck and bring in Jenkins when fit? I'm at a loss as to how Josh Jenkins is. Josh had a back issue before round two resumed and he's still not training. So Josh won't be in the picture for a couple of weeks. So it'll be... It'll be straight swap. I mean, Fort... Fort with Sav in the ruck. Fort did nothing wrong yet got dropped for round two. And perfect two. too, because that Stanley's out for four weeks, Fort gets four weeks of having a crack and trying to make it his position. Because I think that's what's probably missing is that, being able to go, you've got the four-week injury of, of Stanley. You yep. don't have to worry about that. Let's have a... Give you four weeks and, and what are you laughing what about, Scott Gallagher? What are you right? giggling at? <laughs> the medical diagnosis. I don't think he's got the four week injury. Well, medial ligament, it was wasn't a, it? It was a chance to play this week, was the latest. Ray Stanley. Yeah, it was a, oh, like a slight medial. Oh. But I like where you're coming from. It's a four week block. <laughs> yeah, and no, I'm happy for it to be four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Reese, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I just <laughs> made up. I'm a doctor, don't you know that? Dr. Stokes. Uh, <laughs> this one's a, a different Mitch. This is Mitch, not Mitchell. The last question was Mitchell. Uh, would you like to see AFL retire numbers like the NBA? If so, who would make the Cats list? Mitch, I wouldn't, only because I'm selfish and that I love the history. subtle connect. Well, the history, but also then the connection with the next 45. Um, <laughs> and the name oh. on the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> right on. Who wants to wear number 45? <laughs> okay, it hasn't had a great deal of success <laughs> since... Um, Joel Hamling won a premiership, unfortunately not with the Cats... <laughs> So he was the first 45 after I retired. So I like Joel because he had 45. Ryan Abbott. Who? St Kilda player. <laughs> Cam. No, Tahini. no, no. Brad Close. Brad Close. Brad Close now Gee, this year. Really yeah, no, yeah, the no, the no, numbers no. really mean a lot to you. <laughs> what? I wait till they play a senior game. <laughs> I, I, I don't want it to do. I don't, want, I don't like the fact because I don't think the number belongs to a player. I think the number still belongs to the club yep. and the history of the football club. So that, I, 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 do, I do like the American part, but that's – it's a little bit different over that way mm. in the history and the um, the the belonging of a of a, a number to a person. But I think over here, I think it, the number and the jumper still always belongs to the supporters and and the club. See, he puts it so much better than me. Yeah. You can't really even know. You can't even know me. Where's you just said I like seeing my old number run around because well, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah, yeah. It was well, I want them to go. Stokes, well. you said it's better for the club. Yeah, I know. He's wonderful ambassador. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Josh asks, worth playing, worth Jordan Clark playing this week? Uh, yes, league speed, hello, must play. Was playing great footy at the end of last year and has plenty of potential. Josh, yes, 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 are the three well, answers he, from He was one of these mystery comeback from isolation and didn't train well, so he found himself out of the team, but he'll be back. We might have touched on this before, Trent, but just one more. Jack Stephen, does he need more conditioning prior to re-inclusion or is it you get the conditioning from the match play? No, well, playing no, matches? I, think, I think my friend to my left made his feelings clear. Well, what are your feelings, what are your feelings on this, Scott? I would I, – I get one more, but – because there's no VFL game, so what conditioning do you get at training? He's already done a lot of training. So is there no VFL game this week? There's, I don't know where there's a practice match scheduled. I think there is. There might be a scratch match, but – Look, I've come round in the last hour since Stokes, you gave me a spray, that maybe one more, but only one more. You can't be gifting games on reputation if he's not fit enough. No, I agree. Who have you got going out for Puffett? I have uh, got, uh, well, Menengola's crook. I've got Taylor Stanley out. But have you got Clark and Puffett coming back in? Clark, Puffett, four. So that's three. Yeah, so I don't worry about another tall. We'll handle that. You've got a collar. Well, Collar can – did he get through that scratch match? Like, is he done enough condition? I don't think you need to rush. I'd rather leg speed in. So, hang on. You've gone Collar for Taylor. No, I well, don't know. I'm, I'm readdressing that. I'm going <laughs> Parfit, <laughs> Clark and Fort. He needs a lot everyone, of redressing. Everyone just be careful um, who's standing around Scotty right now. He's backpedalling that fast. No. He's liable to run straight over the top of you. Clark, Parfit, Fort for Stanley, Menengola – well, Dalhouse maybe and Taylor, so then you can have Collar Jasney. You can't just throw – like, if you jumble the names, it becomes confusing right, to who Taylor for Collar Jasney. Yeah. Stanley for Ford. Parfit for Menangola. Parfit and I'd have Menangola. Clark – Dalhouse was concussed. Short turnaround, I don't know. Asterix there. Or maybe 
you got to find if Jack Stevens staying okay, is Tom Atkins staying? You find a way because there needs to be Clark needs to be in the team. Tom Atkins Tom stays. Atkins. Wait, 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 I'm just you, you want no one to put pressure on in the forward line. I'm the, one, just, the one player that gives a hundred percent effort every time. Well, Even though he had five touches. I get that. I'd play Clark and Hang Jack on, you know Stevens. We should try. You know what we should try. I've changed my mind. Take again. Tom Atkins out and see if we can achieve zero tackles in the forward half of the ground. Well, that's give me we your should, changes. That should be our aim this week. Give me your changes. I don't even mention his name. No. All right, give me your changes. Agree, agree, agree. Uh, Taylor Kohler, because of the matchups, don't suit Harry this week. Stanley Fort, Menegola Parfit. How do you get uh, Clark in there? How do I get Clark? If Del House is past fit. And, and how do I get Chooker in? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd even say that you would even, wouldn't even need to bring in Kohler Dasney. No, I agree. That's, we're back to my original point. Don't need Colin Jasney. Taylor goes out. Clark comes in. Depending on how much work he's done, he's, he's an automatic selection in our best 18. Clark, Parfit, Fort, and someone else. Should have done your homework before this, Cameron. Uh, I wouldn't play Jack Stephen this week. Yeah, I've come round to that. Too. Pardon? No, I would, I, he's changed his tune. No, this is, no, I love this no, podcast. I, I was, I was hearing... What? Listeners, I was, this is the highlight is. I was Cameron listening to starts it. at point A. No, wait, wait, wait. Let, <laughs> me, let me explain why. B. No, no, let me explain why. <laughs> okay. well, I've come around to it. It's the MCG. Bigger yep. ground, Jack's lack of conditioning mm. is going to be magnified on the MCG <laughs> against a midfield that is swarm and contested ball and everything like that. Um, I think we can go ahead, smash in with that. I'd rather Jordan Clark's run on the outside this week as opposed to Jack Stevens' slightly less conditioning on the, on the G. So I, I don't get this slightly less conditioning. So we've been in pre-season since November. He had three weeks off um, after he had his, um, his dead wound. <laughs> um, and now we're talking about he's not well conditioned. Like, well, I, he I didn't play like he was AFL ready. Well, he's I, not match ready, is he? <laughs> I've watched the, the way this bloke prepares and I've watched him train. But this I'm going the evidence this bloke, of the you, two you hours. Go, you, you, well, you didn't go on a lot of evidence because you gave a couple of bests in your team. Oh. So obviously, evidence isn't a big thing on your... <laughs> it's my you, evidence. It, yeah, exactly. I, I just think I've seen the way that he prepares. I think I've seen the way he trains, and he trains harder than probably pretty much 90% of our list. He is a bull out of a gate, and the difference between him being out there and not, I just think that we need to... We've got him to the club. Let's back him in and give him an opportunity to be able to, to push through this. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, but I think giving the best opportunity to do that. Well, what is he going to do? Go back and play VFL match play? Uh, with 16 perhaps, aside? With perhaps. Just mm. an extra week of that match play where he's not exposed. Oh. Exposed? I can't wait for Thursday. Oh, I can't wait for Thursday. Thursday night, 6.30, I'll be on the phone. Ding! No, but... Text I, I, sent to Cameron. That's, that's the decision I would make. I'd go Stephen for Clark, but... I don't mind if they go back Stephen. Yeah. That's that's not one as one I'm as strong on as the other one. I think that just uh, one the one thing I wouldn't like is that what does that give our playing or definitely with with Jack? What does it give from a club perspective? We bring him in, we got him to the club, we bring him in for one game. I don't it's think a great story. I don't think he should have played this week. I, I yeah I, di- I, di- I disagree. We will see. We will see. 6.30. I, I, if, if he doesn't play well this week, I won't be rocking <laughs> out next week. I'm out. Uh, beautiful. Good chat, guys. Big Great thanks chat. to all of our support and sponsors, Panther Tires in particular, but big thanks to Matty Stokes and Scotty Gallen, all of our listeners for sending the questions in. And Pizza Hut. <laughs> our new sponsor. <laughs> Please keep them coming in. Uh, we will try and answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. We will be back again next week. The Cats take on the Ds on Sunday afternoon, 3.35 at the MCG. Um, we will try and get our American friend as a guest. Scotty, you've got all the contacts. You're going to have to... Yeah, I'll deliver, talk to my man, Tommy. Deliver with that one. We will do some more research on Nathan Templeton. Any <laughs> listeners, please? We who, might have a story a week just who know, to get payback. Who know Tempsey from days gone by? Send those in. We will be back next week. Have a great weekend. Hope the Cats have a terrific win on Sunday afternoon.